No worries. Why Law and Album Review? Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from Boyd Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from No Worries, the collective of Anderson Pack, as well as producer Knowledge, who have... <clears throat> And this is their second album together. Back in 2016, they collaborated on the Yes Lord uh, album. And honestly, I did enjoy the thing quite a bit. I didn't talk about it formally at the time. It was a little bit of a grower for me, but I warmed up to it very quickly. And um, the reason that I didn't talk about it formally at the time was previous to that record, I was not exactly an Anderson Pack fan. I was not really into projects like Malibu and his later projects, which I enjoyed even more. And and a lot of this record, as well as Knowledge's production style, uh, really made me warm up to Anderson's music, and I've been a fan ever since. Now, as far as Knowledge goes, uh, his production has been something that I've enjoyed for years, mostly because I grew up on Dilla Beats and Mad Libs production. And I was very excited to chat about this thing, even if one or two of the singles did take a little bit of time for me to personally warm up to. Uh, but overall, my thoughts on this album? Yes, love! Tracks like 86 Centra early on, this is just simply put the reason that I show up to records like this. This jazzy, formless beat is smoother than my bald head, and Anderson Pack sounds absolutely uh, right at home. As a matter of fact, he sounds genuinely explosive here. I mean, it's nothing wild or crazy or in your face, but he just sounds like he's just been chomping at the bit to get this verse out, and it sounds great. It's hyped in the most chilled out, laid back kind of way. It is classy, classy, classy. A lot of this album is, take for example, Move On. I mean, I am just so impressed Basically, from the start to the finish of the production and the beats that we get here, Knowledge really raised the bar here. Not only that, but I love just how fluid this record comes off. This feels like one continuous, very dreamy, very cool experience. But as laid back and as chilled out as tracks get like this, they are still unbelievably detailed, immaculate even. Uh, the amount of layers is incredible, and the atmosphere that we get throughout this whole record is uh, a reason to tune in in itself. Keeper featuring Fun. Undercat. I mean, for me, this is honestly maybe deep cut of the record. This is smooth as silk, and the laid-back funk of this track spices things up just a bit. Pack's vocals bring some heat, and Thundercat's performance on this track. I mean, it's not like he hasn't had any good features in the last few years, but this might be his overall best performance since Dragon Ball Do-Rag. Yeah, it's awesome, as is Distractions. I mean, for me, this breezy riff is just what I needed right about now. I mean, I feel like every summer there's just one great sort of rapper, Neo Soul Project, that is just ready to take over barbecues and parties, and I feel like that's what this is. Is. It's just so damn soulful and full of heart, and tracks like Lookin' also really impress me. I mean, it's a 55-second instrumental track, but really just shows knowledge, really flexing some of those muscles of his right now. On albums like this, I personally need breaks like this, and this is a really good one. Daydreaming, I think it's my single of the album. I think it's the best track here. Leading up to this record, this was the one single that really stood out to me the most just because of just how different it is. It's definitely a left turn for the record. It's got some big 80s synths. There's definitely some quiet storm elements as well, and Anderson's vocals are unbelievable. Not only that, but the pacing is immaculate. There is just this cinematic drama to it. Alongside of all that, we also get some wailing guitars in the background, which is something I did not expect. This track is classy all around. I also really love From Here featuring Snoop Dogg and October London. Honestly, uh, this is a single that did need to grow on me a little bit. The first few times I heard it, I really wasn't that impressed. Mostly because I just felt like it was a little too gussied up at the time. But the more I listen to it, it's honestly one of the classier, soulful throwbacks that I've heard lately. Like I said, if Knowledge is already a modern master, he really has perfected his craft with this unbelievable instrument. Pax vocals may be the best here. And Snoop, who, God, with every year I have less and less time for, he came to dance here. His performance is a lot of fun. Honestly, I needed an album like this. As a matter of fact, I think this album is just a little bit better than their previous work, Yes Lord. It's still a little spotty, and I do have a couple of issues with it. Like the Thank You intro featuring Dave Chappelle. I mean, it's fine. The beat's cool. The production definitely sets the scene for the rest of this record, but I feel like Dave's uh, voiceover 
over on this track adds absolutely nothing and actually deteriorates uh, from this very cool sound. Where I Go featuring her, as far as the singles go, this was by far the least interesting track here. Uh, Pac's vocals aren't that bad. As a matter of fact, his whole performance is exactly what you would expect. But for me, I feel like uh, it's her that brings this track a little bit down. Uh, her performance is easily one of the most disjointed on this record. And there is no chemistry between any of the artists on this track. It's not for me. And here I am later on in the record. I feel like this track is just, just butt ugly, honestly. I mean, this is an album of chemistry. Two artists working together, and this track here is what happens when you go too far. Uh, these church organs are okay, as is Anderson Pack's very fired up vocal performance on this track, but the two things that I just mentioned just seem to be playing a game of like cat and mouse and trying to catch up with one another, and it just clashes, and it's really ugly. And I hear tracks like more of it, and I look at this album, it's like 19 tracks, and yeah, there's a couple that could have been left off. This instrumental, it, it's okay at best, but in a sea of really beautiful gems, this beat is just a really cool looking pebble. And Pac's performance, it's okay, but he's got probably 15 better ones here. Outside of that, though, eight years later, this album was worth the wait. Their chemistry is undeniable. I do really like Out the Way featuring Ray Khalil as well. Much like Daydreaming earlier, this track definitely has some 80s vibes to it. It's definitely one of the bulkier and bigger sounding tracks here, which worried me from a distance, but the cinematic drama of this track actually makes it work. Pac's vocals are inspired, and Ray Khalil's performance is one of the best guest spots on this entire record. Her vocals absolutely soar. And most importantly, it shows me that the duo still have a lot left creatively and maybe have some more material coming down the pipe. She Used is also so cool. I mean, the vocal samples, the instrumental snipples, this monochromatic atmosphere. A lot of this record is just scratching so many itches and this track is no different. Also, really do enjoy uh, the heavy use of auto-tune on Anderson Pack's vocals here, which I did not know how it would go over, but they actually sound pretty great. Uh, the Never remix featuring Charlie Wilson. At first, I kind of just wrote this off. I wasn't that excited by it, but I hate to say it, but this track's kind of a vibe, man. It's just so hard to place and sexy and smoky. It's just so undeniably cool. Uh, Distant Space, if you're looking for a vocal performance from Anderson Pack, uh, this is one of his most passionate here. I mean, his performance is packed full of love and emotion and soul. Uh, the playing as well, especially the guitars. And I should add, a lot of these tracks are, you know, a minute and a half to two minutes long, but they have a lot going on. I'm really impressed by Walk On By as well. This one features Ray Khalil again, as well as Earl Sweatshirt. And listen, the much more organic instrumental on this track, and for me, the much more organic instrumental on this track, ends off this album on a nice note. The bluesy playing, just how raw Anderson Pack comes off, especially lyrically. It's definitely one of the best tracks here. I can absolutely understand why it was a single. And Earl Sweatshirt uh, definitely brings a really inspired performance as well. And even more as a finale, yeah, it's only about 30 seconds, it's all an instrumental, and yeah, I maybe might have put it a little earlier on and let Walk On By be the finale, but man, is it cool, and it's just great to hear Knowledge flex his muscles a little bit more. Yeah, this album overall has a lot of great stuff going on. As a matter of fact, compared to Yes Lord, I think this album's a little bit better, mostly because they've grown as artists. Uh, the cinematic drama to this record, the production is even nicer and honestly, uh, the two just have really great chemistry. They keep pushing themselves, too. A lot of their vocal guests also just sound right at home here. And yeah, it's still a little spotty, but overall, this is absolutely scratching a lot of itches. I'm feeling a light 8 on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.